All right, hello and welcome to your sixth uh, Selene for Tavar. This one's going to be about another whole slew of keywords. The first one's going to be count. The second one is going to be first, which doesn't, which gives you an error because um, it doesn't, it's not like actually working properly. Tail. Um, and then we're also going to go over uh, drop. Yeah, drop. Okay, so what count does is it takes a list and then it tells you how many things there are in it. So for example, if I have this list and then put it in, I didn't mean to put it like that as a parameter because it can't take that. If I do this, there are nine things here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes! Good job, Selenium. You know how to count. Yeah, so that's how that one works. It's pretty basic. Um, and then there's a, the other keyword, which is called first. It just takes a list, any given list. It doesn't really matter what it is. And it just tells you what the first one is. So for example, if I do first 1947, it doesn't matter what the rest of this is. It's just going to give me 1947 no matter what. Um, tail is the opposite of first. So if I have this same list, which I'll just copy and, whoops, copy, and paste down here. Instead of giving me the first one, it gives me everything but the first one. So that's about how tail works. And then here's the last command, which is called drop. Essentially what this does is it removes a specified number of elements from the list. So if I, we have our list from before, if we drop two of them, then we're just left with these last two. If we drop just one, we'll be left with those. If we dropped none, we'd be left with all of them. If we dropped three, I mean, you, you probably get how this works by now. Uh, I'm just giving you some basic manipulation commands for um, uh, the lists, and now I'm going to, to show you how to write your own prime number checker. So if we do a prime factor of a number, like 29 or whatever, um, you'll see it only gives us one factor if it is a prime number like 29, but if it's a not prime number like 27, it gives us more than one factor. This gives us a very, I mean, you probably knew that already, but this gives us a very easy way to check if a number is prime. So, for example, if we write filter x, and then here, for instead of is prime, we're gonna do count of prime factor of y equals one, because there should be exactly one and now when we run this, you'll notice it does in fact get most of the prime numbers. There is one issue, one is not a prime number. So to do this, you could simply start it at two and that solves your problem. It is kind of slow compared to the other one. If we do our original filtering for prime numbers, you'll notice that that one runs much, much faster That's because it's a, it's a built-in function and those generally just always run faster. Um, then the other ones, this takes 40 milliseconds, so it takes 83 milliseconds, or 78 milliseconds, which is twice as long. But it does work, and you'll notice we kind of, we used, well, we didn't lower our defense on built-ins, we just used different built-in. But it, they're, they're more low-level built-ins than a whole is prime function, which could easily be written in this language. Anyway, that's, that's it. I just wanted to explain why I was teaching some of these things, and we're going to use all of them, I believe. So thanks for watching, and goodbye.